swell's kind of empty. That's better. So about a month ago, I made some videos about making 2D animations in DaVinci Resolve, and they did way better than I could have expected. Thank you guys so much. But you know what this means. We're doing a sequel. Now the question is, what's the next step? What is the next natural progression in my animation journey? Is it to finally actually learn a dedicated animation software like so many of you were asking? No, it's to do even more of it in DaVinci Resolve. Now, I wasn't originally planning on doing another animation video, at least not for a while, but one day I got struck with inspiration for an animated video and I just had to make it. And that inspiration came from a meme, of all things. Specifically, this meme. It comes from a scene in Megamind where he traps Metro Man and they're bantering back and forth. It's a great scene. But I saw that meme and I thought, you know who would fit really well there? A platypus? Patty the platypus! Doesn't it just fit? Like Dr. Doofenshmirtz saying that line is just so in character, like it was too perfect not to do. Yeah, so my goal was to reanimate this scene from Megamind in the style of Phineas and Ferb with Dr. Doofenshmirtz and Perry. Now I might be putting myself at a little bit of a disadvantage because Phineas and Ferb was not originally done in a rigged animation style, it was drawn hand drawn. So we'll see how well this turns out. So first I need to figure out what character was gonna have what lines. Obviously Doofenshmirtz was Megamind and Perry was gonna be Metro Man. I thought about giving him subtitles, but I think it's way funnier if Doof is doing this big monologue and Perry's just I did have a little bit of a problem with Roxanne's lines because there's not really a damsel in distress character in Phineas and Ferb. That's not really Doofenshmirtz's style. I mean, I guess there's Vanessa, but she's not usually that interested in what Doofenshmirtz is doing. So in the end, I just ended up writing out all of her lines. I was able to do that because I gave Norm Minion's lines and then I rearranged them a bit so they come earlier in the scene. It took a bit of rearranging, but I think it flows pretty naturally and it fits the characters pretty well. Now that that was out of the way, I moved on to drawing all the assets for this. So unlike my Scooby-Doo video, I drew everything for this project in DaVinci Resolve. I did that using this technique I got from a Casey Ferris tutorial. I definitely recommend you check out that video, but in a nutshell what I did is I took a polygon and a background and used that to get the main shape of what I was drawing. Then for the outline I would use an instance of that polygon node with solid unchecked and gave it a bigger border width, then I would plug that into a different background. And that's how I drew all the characters, backgrounds, and props except for this background which a friend of mine drew for me. Next I move on to the rigging. So the technique I used for rigging is the exact same as my rigging tutorial. I was able to find some clips from the show and use that to make mouth shapes for Doof and Perry. Norm obviously didn't need me. The final rigs I used ended up ranging from very simple to very complex. Perry, I only added controls for his mouth and to move his eyes because that's all I needed him to do for the animation. Whereas Doof, I had tons of different controls. I ended up using two different custom nodes to control them all just so that everything would be a bit easier to do. So I had one for his head and one for his body. So I was able to control things like his eyes, his eyelids, his eyebrows, his hair, his coat, his legs. Like it, it might have been a little bit overkill, to be honest. And it was still all following those techniques from that tutorial. And then there's Norm, who's just a picture I dragged around. Once I had all those made, I sat down and recorded all of my Lines. A platypus? Barely the platypus? It's not actually in the script, I just wanted to say it. In case you haven't noticed, you've fallen right into my trap! Curse you, Patty the platypus! <coughs> Dude, Fishmerz is gonna kill me. Yeah, just a disclaimer, don't be like me. I had just gotten over a throat infection the week before, and then I destroyed my voice again doing Doofenshmirtz's lines, so like, I'm still coughing because of it, so uh, don't do that. And to top it all off, my Doofenshmirtz isn't even that good. So I took that audio and used it to make an animatic. So an animatic is kind of like a storyboard. It's a rough cut of the video with the voices, and then I just use pictures to let me know what shots I needed to do. Over here, Barry the Platypus. In case you haven't noticed, you found right into my Drop. This helped me nail the timing down, which is important for a more comedy-based video. And working on the animatic, it also gave me a new idea for the ending. I won't spoil it for you now, but at first I wanted this to feel as much like an actual Phineas and Ferb episode as possible, but when I was making the animatic, I added something as a joke that they probably wouldn't have done in an actual episode, but I found it way funnier than my original ending, so I just went with that. Once I had that done, I could move to the fun part of animating. So I realized I made three videos about animation in DaVinci Resolve, but I never actually talked about my process of animating. Whoops. Now there was a reason for that. I'm not a professional animator at all. This might not be the best or most efficient way to do it. It's just kind of what looked good for me. So if you're an actual animator or something and you know a better way to do this, please let me know. So each shot was a little bit different, except for all the parry shots, that was basically the same shot copy pasted. But for the Doofenshmirtz scenes, I found a workflow that worked pretty well for me. 
First, I start out with the lip sync. I would go frame by frame and match his mouth to the audio. It sounds pretty tedious, but it's actually not that bad. And also seeing the end result is really satisfying to watch. Then I animated the rest of the face, like the eyes and eyebrows, getting the expressions down. After that, I would work on the body. I focused mostly on getting the poses right at this stage. I would move on to fixing the timing later. I also added a transform mode after the rig and keyframed the angle of that to make him move back and forth a little bit. Because you only see him from the waist up in most of the shots, I didn't actually have to worry about the legs, which kind of raises the question of why I rigged them, but oh well. This just added a bit more life to the animation, especially since it's just him talking. After that, I messed around with the splines and keyframes and made everything look smoother. So one tip I found to make your animations look more natural, have your characters blink. I couldn't figure out why he was looking so stiff, but I added a blink in the middle of the animation and that added a lot to make him look more natural. So overall, I'd say this was a little bit trickier to animate than my Scooby-Doo video, which is kind of weird because my Scooby-Doo video had a lot more action shots. While this one is mostly just Doof standing around talking. The thing about having more action shots is I have a very clear idea of what the motion is going to be going into each shot, but with dialogue, I just kind of have a vague idea that he's gonna be talking. Like, I know I want him to be moving, but you don't want to have him moving too much because people don't talk like this. But you also don't want to have him standing completely still the whole time because people also don't talk like this. So I had to find a balance that worked for that. Honestly, I think that's something I still need to work on a little bit. I feel like in some of the shots, maybe he has too much movement. I don't know. I'll let you be the judges of that. So I went through and animated all 18 shots and everything was looking pretty good. But there's still one thing nagging me in the back of my mind that I wasn't happy with. Carsu Patty the Platypus! My Doofenshmirtz impression. I just wasn't happy with how it sounded. I can't really get that gravel he has in his voice. So I kind of let my perfectionism get the better of me. Yep, I used an AI voice. Now I know AI is a subject that a lot of people have very strong thoughts about, and I also have my thoughts on the subject. One of the reasons I didn't use AI in my Scooby-Doo video is because there was another fan-made Scooby-Doo project that got in some hot water for using AI voices, so I wanted to avoid that kind of controversy. Also, I felt a lot more confident in my impressions for that video, especially by Scooby, I feel like that's pretty good, but even Shaggy was, it, it's not great, but it's passable. But my Doofenshmirtz impression, I am a lot less confident in. And it's not like Doofenshmirtz is a stranger to AI. He and Plankton are kind of like the poster children for those AI song covers. So I decided to at least give it a shot. So I took my lines and ran them through an AI voice changing website and that gave me this result. I'll show you before and after what it sounds like. We'll see if you're so smart after you taste the full concentrated power of my son Rayonator. We'll see if you're so smart after you taste the full concentrated power of my son Rayonator. Yeah, it sounds like Doofenshmirtz, like it's almost a perfect imitation. But it also kind of lost a little bit of its soul. Like, I don't mean that like in a big hyperbolic sense, like, I mean literally, like, it took off some of the performance. It's a lot more subdued sounding, he doesn't have nearly as much energy, which is kind of a problem when the whole point is that he's shouting most of his lines. So after giving it some thought, I decided that having the performance right and him feeling like the character was more important than him sounding exactly like the character. That and, you know, the potential ethical problems that come with it, which I guess I'll deal with another day. If you're interested in hearing the AI version, I do have that version down below as an unlisted video. And that one also has the original ending if you were curious about seeing what that was like. I feel pretty good about my decision, but let me know if you think you prefer that version. Now normally this would be the part of the video where I show you the final animation, you watch that, and then we go along our merry way. But this time I kind of have a proposition. So this is Dan Poffenmeyer. He's one of the co-creators of Phineas and Ferb, and he's the voice of Dr. Doofenshmirtz. He is very active on TikTok and YouTube, and a lot of times he reacts to fan-made Phineas and Ferb content. So my proposition is this. You watch the final animation, and if you think it's good, maybe send it along to him. How cool would it be to get an animation industry veteran reacting to an animation made all in DaVinci Resolve? Now with that said, you can check out the final animation right here. Over here, Perry the Platypus. In case you haven't noticed, you found right into my trap. 